So this morning I had to wake up at 5, no, 4.45 in the morning and Melbourne was still pitch black, quiet. It took me probably half an hour to actually roll out of bed. But when I did, it was really cool to get outside and see that it was going to be one of those picture-perfect days with blue skies and you could see the twilight on the horizon. And I took off driving down the coastline south of Melbourne and I got down probably an hour and a half south where we got to Phillip Island and I was meeting up with a girl named Jess who runs Girls On Board down on the Phillip Island coast. That'll be good. You can surf circles around me if you want. <laughs> I was pretty stoked to get here and initially I was going to go alone, but when I was met by a gorgeous professional surfer girl, it's hard to say no to some good company in the water, especially when I suck at surfing. I know I do you. You say I'm sorry, but at least you know the truth. And now I'm off to get a nice hot cup of coffee and meet up with Paul from Yarra Yaring in the Yarra Valley. And we're gonna check out Phillip Island and really see what it's about. So how long have you been at Yarra Yaring? We've just about knocked off my fifth vintage. So uh, four and a half years, started in 2008. One thing about you guys is you have phenomenal wines and your wines go quite a ways back as well. Indeed, yeah. We've got that pedigree of sort of now 44 years. Have you ever got to make it down here towards Phillip Island before? Or? Oh yeah, I used to, well, when I used to surf back in my very late teens, early 20s, I'd, I'd come down at Woolamai and then there's Cape Patterson just down here, which are bloody unreal and um, it's a beautiful part. You're so close to Melbourne, great beaches. I heard Cape Woolamai is a, a good spot to go surfing. However, I think if we would have gone out there this morning when I was with Jess, I might have, uh, I might have not made it to this cafe <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> Seeing Australia's largest fur seal colony was seriously cool. I grew up around seals, but I'd never actually got to get up close and see a heap of them just there interested in you, looking at you, and just thousands of them. And seeing them all on the island just like you would off of South Africa was sick. It was really cool to see. Yarra Yering is incredibly unique as a vineyard situated within Australia, not just in the Yarra Valley. Uh, it's one of the iconic vineyards in the entire country, really. Uh, we made a philosophical decision right at the inception of the vineyard to not use any water, not irrigate, so it's all dry grown. Uh, for us, that's incredibly important to get the roots of the vines way down into the subsoil. That's where your individual thumbprint, that's where your postcode is, your stamp that can't be replicated anywhere else in the world. So by not irrigating, down they go. Concentration, complexion, signature, capture that in the vineyard. I think that just helps typify what goes into the bottle and says unquestionably that that is Yarra Yarra. But we had such fun, live the life you love. All you need is wonder. we go through we check the the progress of the fermentation yeah. we have a bit of a bit of a look bit of an appraisal yeah right I reckon this needs a plunge there we go do you do the plunge with your hands while you're there just really so this is the plunge and you know hands on I like that you got me wanting to work on my spitting technique now.
No, the little patine. <laughs> Was this a separate vat as well? Yeah, that was a 100% barrel fermentation on that one. Okay. Whereas these were fermented within the vats upstairs. Oh, could we try one? Uh, of the, the, the yeah, vat just the vat, yeah. But so see, so that's that's awesome because I'm glad we tried this because it can really show me the differences of how you guys have all that control as well. So being able to do your 100% barrel ferment here, mm -hmm. find what you're looking for in this vat. This is all complex like crazy and just popcorn-y, you know, the mallows coming through. Mm -hmm. Over here is a lot more of the fruit. Yep. And um, I mean, I think maybe it's just because there was more of the complex factors going on there that it balanced it out a little bit more, but I could feel a bit more acid in this one. Getting to head down and go for a kayak was cool. And the last time I went kayaking, my friend Robin said that she's never had anyone fall off her kayak. And I fell in last time. And this time as well, I've gone and done it again. Stuart of Pioneer Kayaking told me that no one on his journeys have ever fallen in. And I managed to roll the kayak in about 1.75 seconds flat. It's dangerous, man. <laughs> and then I went home commando in a blanket and sweatpants, so that was a good cap to the day. <laughs> Visiting Victoria has been absolutely amazing. Just outside of Melbourne, we're now in the Yarra Valley, but just before this we were in Phillip Island. And Victoria overall and these spots around here are just really particular and different from anywhere else in the country. It reminds me more of last year's trip to New Zealand and the rugged terrain that you can see here and probably similar to what Tasmania is like, which we'll get to see soon. But this is much different. The wines that are made here are much different as well. The activities relate to that and it's, I mean, it's cold in the vineyard right now. It's absolutely an amazing place. I mean, there's mountains in the Alps that surround you and I really do think that the wines reflect that and those activities reflect it as well. And this is truly one of the most beautiful spots in Australia. And to be able to taste the wines and taste the difference in the wines here after getting to experience the region hands-on with a bit of hands-on wine making today as well, can't ask for a better time. I mean, you can't even ask for just a better region. You can get a rolling shot and it's beautiful. Next up on episode 3, I head further north to the country's top destination, Sydney. Just down the road is the Hunter Valley Wine Region, home of the nation's most premium Semillon and some bloody great Shiraz. I catch up with Brokenwood Wine senior winemaker Simon Steele, who has me doing a few oyster and Semillon shots before he tells me all about the unique soil structures they have around the area. In one way or another, we decide to get a bird's eye view of the unique terrain of the Hunter Valley Wine Region.